Even though temperatures are heating up, the garden is really taking off. Some of our fun projects this week included adding shade, adding mulch, and having the soil tested. It was super interesting to see the results from that one. Harvested the first tomatoes this week, lots of zucchini, pesky birds. Stay tuned to the end for a garden tour where I show you everything that's growing in the garden this week. One project that kept us pretty busy this week was adding mulch to all the beds. Whether you use compost or straw or leaves, that part doesn't matter quite as much as really giving a layer of insulation to those plants so that it helps them, it helps keep the temperatures more cool and hold in that moisture. And it's all about keeping things a little bit cooler and giving them enough moisture during these hot summer months. Tyler's helping me add shade cloth to this existing trellis. Temperatures are heating up. So I have a roll of shade cloth. So we cut it and attach it with zip ties. Pretty simple when you have existing trellises to add shade cloth. This bed is growing ginger, turmeric, and peanuts, along with eggplant, and they can all benefit from some afternoon shade. So today I'm adding in this little kit made for a four by eight bed that is pretty simple to use actually, it's pretty slick. It will shade this bed, which if these things are gonna grow well here in Arizona, they're gonna need some extra shade. The turmeric and ginger are really struggling, so I added some more shade cloth that western afternoon sun. The turmeric already looks so much happier before it was frying as soon as it was sprouting. So now that it's got some afternoon shade, it should do better. Same with the ginger and the peanuts. Not very fancy, definitely not pretty. Giving these guys a little bit of relief from that hot afternoon sun. One thing I've thought about doing a few times but never actually done was have my soil tested. We've added lots of different beds over the course of several years and I've wondered what is exactly going on in each of these garden areas and what can I do to improve the soil in those areas. So when I was approached by my soil soil testing kits to give it a try, super excited. The process couldn't have been easier and I was really surprised by the results. The box comes like this, mailing, here's the scoop, and then this is what you are going to put the dirt inside, and it has a UPC that matches your label. Really simple, again, not a sponsored post, but I actually found this information really helpful. I added the recommended items, such as blood meal and lime, and I could see a difference in my beds almost immediately. I had no idea some of my beds were so low in nitrogen. Even though I was adding compost, they were low in this essential nutrient. I'm curing some of the harvested onions, letting the skins dry out a little bit. More onions. Definitely think I planted enough onions this year. Etoy onions are all done. At the end of the season, I like to leave the last blooms on the wildflowers and some of the flowers, and then collect the seeds for next season. I haven't done that with sweet peas before. Not sure how well they do, but free seeds. Here's a tip, harvest your zucchini before they get this big.
These cucumbers are really starting to take off. I threw in an Armenian cucumber in here too. Just those take our heat a little bit better for once these guys die off. So hopefully there's enough room for all of them to play happily. Lemongrass coming back. Apple tree. This is the Dorset Golden. It's like I got an apple there. is already beginning to climb. This will be covered before you know it in green and then this fall it will have beautiful pink blooms. So this apple tree is slowly waking up. In this part we have the Braeburn Looks like we're getting some apples here. And this is the Gala arm. No apples yet. Golden Delicious on this part. This is the Honeycrisp. Yeah, probably not going to get too much. Hopefully it wakes up. This is the Fuji, kind of waking up here. I believe this is Anna down below. finished harvesting the asparagus for the season so now we just let these fronds go they're gonna get energy to do it all again next year so these little seed pods will grow and turn red and eventually have seeds inside so then I'll plant those seeds planted out this planter with elephants food and it seems to be settling in just fine Definitely a rose newbie. I added several David Austin roses to my garden last January. So they've been in over a year now. Still learning, but I put the climbing roses here with these trellises and looking forward to having these guys covered in roses. We'll see. Swiss chard. This bed gets afternoon shade. The Swiss chard seems to do pretty well here even during the summer. This bed has a few pepper plants ground cherries, and then some Armenian cucumbers there that will grow up that trellis. The tops of the garlic are starting to die back. That's telling me that it's going to be time to harvest the garlic pretty soon. The artichoke bloom is just about to open. This season I am having a huge issue with birds. They are pecking at every stinking one of my squash. It is so frustrating. I put one of the melon cradles over the squash and held it in place with a name tag. So let's see if it works. Birds are not my friends. I am not happy with the birds right now.
first blooms happening on the bee balm. If you're looking for a great tomato for the low desert, these yellow pear tomatoes have done really well every time I've planted them. Super prolific, easy to grow. Love these. These are on their way out, but we are definitely saving seeds from these guys, so letting the seed pods develop. Not sure if this uh, vine is, if it likes the zinnia or if it's really mad at the zinnia. All right, I am in shock right now. This morning I put this on thinking, haha, birds won't get it. Look at this. What the heck? Stupid birds. Ugh. All right, any ideas, please send them my way. It didn't work, stupid birds. Thank you so much for watching. 